Hi everyone, this is Dawn, and we are at part seven of our retreat. Um, last week we looked at um, the sin in our lives in light of God's love for us. And this week we're going to take that a little bit further and look at um, look for patterns of sin within our lives. Again, this isn't one of those feel-good weeks on the surface. It seems like, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> But it is an, invita an invitation to, to look into our lives a little bit more, to see who we are, who the person God made us to be, and how those two match up, and how even in, our, in the places which aren't great, God still loves us. It's just amazing. So uh, if you think of, um, you know, they have those children's books, the dot-to-dot -dot books, and sometimes they make them for adults and they just have a whole bunch of dots on a page with numbers and you start to connect the dots and especially in the harder ones in as you connect them you think well what is this going to be and then slowly an image tr starts to emerge and it can be quite surprising sometimes they're quite intricate that's what we want to do this week is to connect the dots in our lives um, accompanied by jesus assured of his love we want to look where patterns emerge and where sin happens in us. And um, so I have a, a, another handout that sort of walks us through. For me, especially the prayer this week was helpful. And so the prayer that's on the bottom. And again, use those words if they're helpful. If they're not, come up with something different. But it sort of just gears me, it helped to gear me in the right direction, I should say, instead of getting lost in a variety of other thoughts. And so what we're hoping to do is to look at um, what are my underlying inclinations that always result in working against what God desires in me? What are some of my most basic fears? What are my unfreedoms? That was a, a good question. We always, we talk about wanting to be free, but where in our lives are we unfree and what's at the root of that, what keeps causing that. We don't usually wake up and think, oh, today I'm going to just go out and sin all over the place. <laughs> it's usually us in everyday interactions, just choosing what we think is good or safe or, you know, what we think we need without consulting God. And so it's those automatic choices that we're looking for that end up putting us in a bad place and sinning and choosing the, against what is good. And so um, it this week will not be pretty. Um, it will probably end up with an image of ourself that is messy and broken and unattractive. <laughs> um, but you might end up also thinking, how could God possibly love me? But that's where you should be because it is in that place that we discover who we are and why we need a savior, that we can't do it on our own. Um, so, so it's important to do, but it's important to do this not on your own. Um, you need to ask Jesus to accompany you. I'd actually suggest um, having, a, if you spend some time each day, this has to be a little more concentra concentrated, um, spend some time each day where you can just be quiet and close your eyes and envision that you are really sitting at the feet of Jesus. So for me, I use the, um, there's an icon of the Trinity. And so I imagine that I'm just sitting at Jesus's feet. You can just think of a picture of what you think Jesus was like, sit at his feet. And then, um, as you're sitting there, ask him to help you work through these. Um, if you do this in isolation, which is tempting because you don't want anyone, including God, to know what's going on, <laughs> as if you could hide this from God. But if you end up doing this alone, you'll just end up feeling bad about yourself, rejected, depression, um, humiliated. But honesty is not about humiliation. Freedom comes by sitting at Jesus' feet and being comforted in your discomfort. So go to those places which are 
you, you try and hide, to look for the patterns so that you can figure out together with God what is happening and how you can be more assured of God's love and live less unfree, to live freely. I'll leave you with one last image that might be helpful. If you think of a house, maybe your house or the idea of a house, you have a lovely front yard and maybe you invest some money in it so it looks really nice so people that pass by have a good image of you. And so we can think of our lives sort of like our house. So on the outside you want to present a really good image. And as you walk into somebody's house, if you go into your house I mean, sometimes you greet people in the entranceway or maybe you go to a living room and so you might greet neighbors or someone just stopping by. Um, people that are close to you, closer to you, you might invite them over for dinner and so you go a little further into the house and you have some people in your dining room. Um, the most intimate places are places like the bedroom or the bathroom, which not many people go to, but there's still more people. Then you have these places in your house where you cram all the, your things in maybe, like if you have a, a basement or an attic or a storage room or a garage where you don't want anybody to see because there's just too many things in there. And even you don't like to go in there, it's just too overwhelming. And so that's what this week is, that you're gonna go into this basement or whatever your place is, but you're going to go with Jesus to go into this basement and ask Jesus to help you see what's in there, to help you open the boxes, things that have been dusty and just um, not looked at for years, together open them, work through them, and be assured of his love. And may you end this week more free than you are at this moment in time. Have a good week.